on to body paragraphs um, because that's still really important, right? So your aim with body paragraphs, much like how when we were writing out Quetel. Hey, Harry. Hey, Harry. Oh, my dog just visited the doorway and left me. How it was going kind of down until the link kind of brought it back up. Um, this is also doing the same thing. You want to aim your body paragraphs. It sounds bizarre, but hopefully visualizing it will help. You want to aim your body paragraphs to be like an upside down triangle. What that means is you start broad and you're getting more specific as you go on and offering more specific examples. Then again, the link will take you back up to that topic. What does that actually look like in practice though? We have our topic, we have our introduction, we have our point. However you want to describe it, a peel, a teal or whatever. It goes for basically all humanities plus English subjects. What this means is you start with that. It's our broad statement. I'm talking about uh, the NEP. I'm talking about power in the crucible. I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about the, uh, you know, baptism in Christianity, for instance, just to pull a different subject out of there. Then we move on to the elaboration or the explanation. What did I call it for this? Hey, expand. It could also be expand if you would rather keep it consistent. Um, this is where you just expand, basically. You say, this topic is about this. You know, the baptism is a key sacred sacrament that is derived from blah, 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 blah. Power in the crucible is demonstrated by blah, 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 blah. Uh, the NEP was a plan implemented by Lenin after the Civil War to blah, 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 blah. Basically, context to your argument. Then you move into evidence and explanation. This is, as it suggests, your evidence. Um, it is all about saying, here is what I have to prove my point, and then I'm going to elaborate on it. I maybe should have swapped elaborate and explanation down, but that's fine. And you're going to do that, as we're going to come to, three or four times. You want three or four pieces of evidence and explanation in each body paragraph. And then you just link it back. Now, because I'm so nice, I've also color coded this. So we look, we got Quedal, we got Kitty, and then you can also use Peel or Teal. Now, obviously, you've all used come across Peel or Teal before. I'm sorry, the purple doesn't stand out as well there. Or you may have come across like P, where they repeat the E's heaps, or T, or whatever. Um, and there are various others. There's pet or whatever. Not the point. The point is, is this can be used for any essay subject. What you'll notice is that the colours kind of all correspond. The question and the keywords and the topic, they're all red. They're all about getting what, what am I actually saying? What is my answer? What am I actually focusing on here? Your explanation your interpretation, your elaboration is all about expanding, providing that context and actually knowing what you're going to write about. Then you move into your topics, which is more the evidence side. I should have flipped those colors around. The explanation, not the evidence. Um, the topic is like, what am I talking about? What's the point I'm making? Your argument. Then you have your argument, your content, which is the blue in this case. And how that kind of links, what am I bringing up in order to support my individual argument, then your link, your element, your link, or your elective. And it all kind of links together. Now, that's all really ugly, so I'm going to clear it. <laughs> but you can kind of see, right, it flows through the same pattern. So let's take a look at how we might structure a body paragraph, and then I can spend about 10 minutes on questions. Um, and I saw someone asked, is there any way I can record this lecture? Um, so this lecture is recorded. Obviously it's been live streamed. What you should be able to do is after this lecture ends, you can go back and watch the thing again or reload the page and then go back and watch the lecture again. 
Uh, so you don't have to say goodbye to my voice forever if you don't want to. <coughs> That's my first cough of the day. I'm normally really bad at coughing during lectures. <coughs> so let's break down what this might mean for each subject you do. Now I've picked history, English studies of religion and other humanities. Um, primarily because these first three I did. The other humanities I'm just kind of guessing. Um, but it is basically demonstrating that this rough theme works for every essay subject, basically. This rough pattern, this rough method should work for you no matter what you're studying. Uh, you probably do it for like others, like a science mini essay, but I'm not giving you that advice because I didn't, I did chemistry in year 11 and then I got out of there. Um, so either way, what you're doing kind of instantly, you're introducing something. So for history, it's whatever the topic, the NEP, uh, Vietnamese uh, tactics. English, you're introducing your theme, revenge, power. Studies of religion, your study area. Um, so that might be baptism, Pope John the Paul, John the 23rd, whatever. Other humanities introduce topic, you kind of get the gist by now, um, but it might be young offenders protocols or uh, globalization. <laughs> As you can see, I didn't do it, but hopefully you can kind of make that link. Your second step, your orange step, I'm going to change my color, is the explanation bit. What is the NEP? What were, or why does it matter that Vietnamese combat tactics were used? English, it's about linking to context or purpose. Why has Arthur Miller decided to explore power? Why does Shakespeare need to make a point about revenge and forgiveness? So elaborating on that. Studies of religion, similar principle. Why do we care about baptism? Why do Christians do it? Why do Muslims go on Hajj? So what is the connection to the religion or the faith? Other humanities, why do we study young offenders protocols? I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure. I can't think of it off the top of my head, so I can't unfortunately give you a random uh, analysis off the top of my head. Um, then we move on to our blue and green bit. Now, this is admittedly where it gets a little bit funkier because it flips a little bit. Because obviously you're going to have Within, as I've said, we've got three or four for each, right? Including for studies of religion. Obviously you can't, you're not just chucking four quotes in and going, yeah, that's good enough. What we need to do is move through and actually accurately go, this is what I'm pointing out. This is my evidence to support. It gets a bit funky because I've ordered quote, impact, source, explanation, evidence, analysis. But you can also think of it as like point or argument, quote, impact, argument, source, analysis, whatever you want to do. Um, so we have our green, which is our topic, basically. What are we bringing up? Impact, explanation, analysis. Why does this piece of evidence I'm bringing up add to my argument? Why does this quote I'm bringing up add to the purpose and the theme? Why does this source explain the importance of baptism to a religion? Then we move on to our evidence. This is straightforward. This is, you know, a statistic a quote with a technique, uh, a Bible quote or a theologian quote, a specific uh, legal case. Um, then finally we go our link and that just links all the way back to what is our point, right? The quote, the impact, the source, the evidence, etc. As I've said, we want to be doing that three or four times per paragraph. I probably should have picked a different colour there, but that's fine. Three is the minimum. That's the goal. Ideally, four. Best best essays will have four. Obviously, it depends. If it's a 15 mark essay, you're not going to get four in every paragraph. Um, but if it is a regular 45 minute essay, a 20, 25 mark essay, your goal is three paragraphs of four pieces of evidence or four arguments, basically. And now you can see it nice and colorfully, properly. Um, so you can see how it works. It all kind of matches. Now, because I want to answer some questions, I'm not going to go through these paragraphs, but you can see they're very nice and colourful. As you can see, it's not necessarily that I follow the order of, this is a history one, of green, blue, because we have kind of green, blue, green, blue, green, blue, green. So it kind of is a bit funky. And we have quite a long link. 
That's okay. It doesn't have to fit exactly with this structure. This structure is a guide to help you tick basically all the boxes. Same with this one. This is an English paragraph. Ignore the numbers. That's to signal something else. And I didn't want to delete all the numbers. Red, yellow. If you were do in my crucible lecture this afternoon, this was one of the paragraphs. It looks a lot nicer when it's not black and white. Um, yellow, green, blue. So again, English here, I actually said blue, green, quote impact. But here we've got green, blue, uh, green, blue, green, blue. So we flipped it a bit. That's okay. Another, no, this isn't history, this is a religion. Uh, green, blue, heaps of green, blue, little bit of green, little bit of blue. As you can see, it's not necessarily even, it's not necessarily accurate, and that's okay, provided you're mixing it up. Um, and as you can see, there's obviously a link missing here, but that's because I cut the body paragraph in half. Um, it's not perfect. The colors aren't necessarily equal, but that's not the point. The colors are a guide for you to be able to tick off all the things you need to do. Finally, we move on to our conclusion. I like to think of this as the mic drop moment for your essay, um, which is effectively, you should be able to put your pen down at the end of your essay and be like, hell yeah, I nailed that. Um, that's effectively should be your goal. It's short, it's simple. Generally, it'll be restate your thesis and your arguments. Sometimes you can also add a little bit of flair at the end. To be honest, I've cut off the flair. This, this conclusion did have a flair. Um, bit of flair to it and I deleted it because it just complicated my vibe. Um, but as you can see, thesis, arguments. So that's the Q. The arguments is a T there. We're still following the same colour pattern just to make it easier. So as you can see, conclusively through his manipulation of form, Miller is able to deeply assess human motivations and desires. Miller goes further, blah, 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 blah. Centralised power, one. Social intolerance, two. So Manipulation of social power. I feel like that may not be quite correct, but that's okay. Not the point. Uh, here, we've actually flipped it for modern. Um, that the social... So we have our kind of thesis here. Thus, Soviet problem policy was only partially successful. Uh, the survival of the Soviet state over the spread of socialism, basically. Uh, through the militaristic, strategic, diplomatic and sociocultural factors that impacted, were impacted by Soviet foreign policy, uh, as said aims were fundamentally incompatible. So still arguments, we've just flipped it around. Now, 